fucking game. Yeah. Apps. That was hot. Oh. Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. Time is but a window. New mice come out all the time. Now I remember back in the old days, my favorite mouse to use while playing Counter-Strike was a wheel mouse optical. It's because back in the day, old mice didn't have great sensors, and because of that, some of them had to use something called prediction to figure out where you wanted to move your mouse or else it would spaz out. Now the best way to test for this is by moving the mouse quickly, you'd see that those mice would make straight lines, whereas the wheel mouse optical had freedom of movement. Now this really sucked at the beginning because all of the quote gaming mice had faster sensor speeds but didn't have the freedom of movement. Which meant if you wanted to be as accurate as possible you wanted to go with a mouse that had a lower tracking speed like a wheel mouse optical. But it also meant you couldn't use a super low sensitivity either and it also meant that you couldn't flick at all. This is because once you hit the max perfect control speed the mouse would actually slow down and you'd get negative acceleration. Now it took years for technology to overcome this. I'm talking over 10 years for technology to overcome this. It wasn't until the end of the source generation of Counter-Strike players where mice really started to get good. And I never was a huge fan of Razer, but I do have to give Razer credit here because they were the first gaming mice to introduce no correction drivers. But it doesn't end there. Because companies saw that people liked having faster maximum control speeds without prediction, they decided to move over to laser sensors. Now while this seemed good on paper because laser sensors could have up to 4 or 5 meter a second tracking speeds, the problem was that laser sensors had a really bad issue of getting positive acceleration. Now sadly this ended up being on the hardware side and they were not able to get rid of this acceleration with firmware. On top of that, laser sensors were not able to track on lighter mouse pads. Which meant that gamers were thrown into a tough situation once again. If you wanted a decent sensor, you had to use a death adder. Because for years it was the only mouse on the market that had a good high max tracking speed and didn't have prediction correction. Now this led to a really interesting scenario. Because there was only one good mouse that really didn't have any limitations, everyone that knew anything about mice used it. Now this time period in competitive gaming was very interesting because most everyone used the same mouse. Though there was a few standout performers that used the Logitech's MX500 or 518. Though these were prediction mice and those players were usually stuck sniping. Now the bad news is, all of these mice were really aimed at players who had bigger hands. And if you had smaller hands or wanted a different type shape, like an ambidextrous shape, you were shit out of luck. People who still wanted to use ambidextrous mice would go back to wheel mouse opticals, and other people who had smaller hands would probably use something like a Microsoft Blue. Lower tracking speed, but you didn't have prediction. Now towards the end of Counter-Strike Source, we started to get a bunch of strange shapes. This was mostly thanks to Razer, who decided to move forward with the optical sensors, since the laser sensors weren't performing well. This meant if you had smaller hands, you could go out and pick up something like a Razer Abyssus, which was a smaller mouse design, still had a great sensor, but it also had a weird flat design at the time. Now at this point, really the only company that was really innovating mice was Razer. Meanwhile, Logitech wasn't too far behind, eventually adding no prediction sensors to their MX518 and calling it the, I think it was G400. Now these two companies really dominated the mouse market for a very long time, and there wasn't really any independent mouse creators until Zowie came along. They brought back the old loved shapes from the Microsoft mice, and even allowed you to choose different sizes. Though to be completely honest, my favorite mouse that they created was the Zowie AM, and I hope they bring that back one day. Now of course, companies like this led to other independent companies like Final Mouse coming out, when they actually produced mice you could buy on Amazon rather than through limited stock. And of course, Final Mouse ended up leading to the whole ultralight revolution. So as you guys can see, mice have come a very long way. And now that I've caught you up pretty much for the most part, let's talk about why I created this video. Due to how the release schedule of mice works, you don't really get to try them all out and figure out which one is actually the best for you. But if you're someone like me that likes to collect mice for a hobby, then you have a big storage container full of them. So I went through this storage container and picked out the 10 that I'm most interested in playing with. Now I was going through some of my favorite shapes of the past and realized that a lot of those mice still haven't quite been updated with good sensors yet. For example, the Razer Crate 2013 could really use a new sensor and of course side buttons. Still though, due to how much I love that mouse, I did decide to include it in the list. So the list goes as follow. The Vaxi AX. The EC2B. The EC3C. The Death Adder V2 Mini. The Viper Mini, the Razor Crate, the Ventus R, the Ultralight 2, the Skull Mini, the Model D Minus, and I have a budget Walmart gaming mouse called the On Something or Other. 
I included this as a baseline to show how much better these gaming mice are than that budget mouse. And honestly, I was in disbelief of how much better. All right, so I know there's going to be a couple questions like why did I use the EC2B instead of the EC2C? I did order an EC2C, but it never came in. And I do have an EC2B that I used to be quite good with. In fact, I used it for the last two seasons of making the team. And also, I know that someone's going to ask why I didn't use the newest Starlight 12 mouse from Ultralight. Now, I know someone's going to ask why I didn't use a Starlight 12 instead of an Ultralight. And the truth is, I just don't have a Starlight 12 yet, but I did order a Phantom. All right, let's break down the testing. I did not do any tracking testing, but I did do precision testing and flick testing. And obviously, I used Kovac so I could get detailed stats on accuracy and score. Now, each one is important because while accuracy will tell you how accurate you were, score will tell you how quickly you did the action. So if you have a high accuracy but a low score, it means you're usually clicking the dots a little bit too slowly. And you can imagine how having slow aim can affect you in a game like Counter-Strike. All right, so here's some basic expectations I had before starting this test. First of all, I expect to absolutely dominate the precision test with the ambidextrous mice. I expect to not only be more accurate, but also quicker. That being said, I expect the results to be completely flipped on the flick shot test. The second thing to take note of is I expect to do better with smaller mice since I have smaller hands. And the final thing to take note of is I actually expect to be less consistent with lighter mice than I am with heavier mice because with the lighter mice, I have less control over where it's going to stop. And with that, here are the results. Now on the left side, I have my precision aiming results, and on the right side, I have my flick aiming results. Now why don't all of the mice have results? Well, I decided to take the ones that had the highest precision aiming results and move them over to the flick aiming results. After all, if I'm not precise with it, why would I want to use it anyways? Now with this graph, we can look at all 10 mice and their precision. I guess 11 if you count the baseline. The higher up towards the top, the better accuracy I got, and the farther over to the right, the higher score I got. Now remember, score is a little bit more indicative of how fast I was moving from target to target. But regardless, we can see it. There is one mouse that stands above all others, and that is the Death Adder Mini V2. Not only did it have the fastest target to target, with the exception of the Ultralight 2, it also was far more accurate for me than the Ultralight 2. Which is very surprising, as it is a palm mouse, even though it is a very small palm mouse. In fact, when we look at it, it is the only palm mouse that did better than the ambidextrous mice. As you can see, all three ambidextrous mice had the next highest scores, with the Viper Mini, Razor Crate, and Ultralight 2. That being said, when it comes to sheer accuracy, I actually did better with the palm mice. As you can see, with the Viper Mini, the EC2B, the Model D, and Ventus R. So taking whatever I considered the best five of these, I moved over to the flick test. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even believe what I saw in this test. Now once again, the on generic gaming mouse didn't do very well. But as you can see over on the top hand right side, the Death Adder Mini V2 blew away all the other mice. In fact, it was so good that after these tests were over and I saw the results, I decided to try it again. After all, maybe it was just a lucky run, but when I ran it again, I got even better results. I mean, I was not only clicking quickly, but I was hitting 92.73% accuracy. For comparison, the next closest results was with the Ultralight 2, where I was hitting 78.57% accuracy. That's a 14% increase. So I guess I know which mouse I aim best with. Now if I could just keep from accidentally right-clicking it. Hey, I'm gonna throw this out there just in case anyone from Razer is actually watching this video. Please, make the mouse button separate from the actual body of the mouse. Having it connected just means that whenever I put any pressure on the mouse, the right-click goes down without me even noticing it. Well, now that I've found the mouse that I'm supposedly best with, how do I play with it in Counter-Strike? Obviously, the mechanics in Counter-Strike are vastly different than in some aim trainer, so there's a lot more things that go into it. Overall, I felt fairly consistent, but this is when I realized I probably should have done some tracking tests, because one of the issues I was having was trying to stay on target. I was hitting my first shots just fine, but if for some reason I didn't hit that first shot, I was having a hard time recovering. Now, of course, this is something that will probably go away with time and practice. Still, though, I thought I should let you guys know in case you decide to do some tests of your own. Overall, I'm very happy with the results, and I will definitely be using this mouse for a while to come. Now, I said that the Starlight 12 will be coming in later this year, and of course, I'll probably repeat some tests like this when that comes out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative, and Razor, if you are watching this, please make it so I stop accidentally right-clicking the Death Adder Mini. And as always, have a great day.